at Ace Soldiers. I had ice in this five minutes ago. I really hope you guys can't hear the weed whackers that are outside my apartment, but they've been weed whacking for like three hours. How many weeds need to be whacked out there, right? At this point, it is ludicrous. It is overkill. Speaking of overkill, check out the new accessories. Oh, I'm digging them like the grave. Hi, yes, welcome to my video. I apologize, it's a little bit late, uh, but you know, I work a nine to five and stuff happened this week. So you're getting a video a little late, but better late than never. Something that's been circling my mind for the last little while is the hype cycle trend of book talk and book Twitter and bookstagram and booktube. And for those of you that don't know, I work in publishing and book distribution. And one of the books that my company distributes is Fourth Wing by Rebecca Yaros. If you've been on the internet at all in the last month or so, you will see that this book is literally flying off of shelves. And I was debating doing some kind of consumerism or hype video concerning Fourth Wing because it's all I've been seeing on book talk lately. But then another book recently came out, Yellow Face by RF Kuang, AKA her literary debut that I went to the event for and got my book signed. But I've noticed that the way that this book is hyped is very different to the way that Fourth Wing has been hyped. And then and then, if you've been on book Twitter at all for the last little while, uh, you will have seen these series of shenanigans that led to the sudden spike in sales of This Is How You Lose the Time War, which is a sapphic sci-fi fantasy time travel novel that is by Amal El Motar and Max Gladstone. But these three books have really challenged myself to look at how I consume media and how I consume it in the long term versus in the short term. The population at large sees trend cycles all the time, right? You, we see it in fast fashion the most. Oh my God, is Kindle Unlimited the fast fashion of the book industry? <laughs> and in publishing, we mostly see trends based on certain genres, like the romance genre being trendy. But I find it so interesting how book bloggers in particular can really find a gem and blow it up and make it viral and further influence where publishing trends will go. So without further ado, grab a drink, grab a snack and buckle in while we talk about how book bloggers influence social trends, what even is virality, and go over the various hype cycles of book talk. Now also quick disclaimer, I doubt I'm saying anything new and innovative in today's video, but I just wanna get my thoughts out. And hey, there are plenty of academic articles that you can look up yourself if you wanna know more. So the trend cycle has give or take five stages where number one is the book is made it blows up it's going viral people know about it step two is audience demand we figured out that this book was really good and we want more things like it so that means that publishers are going to be suddenly acquiring a lot more books in hopes of publishing the thing that people want right away. Twilight was the face that launched a thousand YA paranormal romances. Step three, the race is on. What publisher can publish a book that is exactly, but not quite like the other book that just hit virality? What's gonna be the follow-up book? Which one is going to make the most money and who is it by and from what publisher and will it get movie deals? Step four is inevitably oversaturation. Oh my God, there are so many freaking books exactly like that other one out there now. There's too much of it and not all of it is good because publishers panicked during the second and third stages and acquired a bunch of things without really maybe doing their due diligence to see if something needed editing or if it was actually on trend. And number five is the cool down. The audience gets bored. People stop acquiring stories like this. The hype around things cools off and eventually the genre dies a slow death. Now this trend cycle could be anywhere from like a year to a couple of years. And of course not everything's gonna happen in those exact stages. Every once in a while, the genre's gonna be cooling and then suddenly there's gonna be this one breakout book that really relaunches the whole thing. Plus it is called a trend cycle. Eventually things will cycle back into fashion. Like now, apparently YA dystopians are back and I truly don't know how to feel about it. So the five stages are the typical trend cycle. But when I'm thinking of hyping books, I'm thinking of it less as a full cyclical cycle and more of something that is a swift peak to a then very fast drop off. The hype cycles that I'm most familiar with are those quick hype cycles that happen on book talk and book Twitter, where, you know, one day a book gets announced and everyone's super excited and they're retweeting it, retweeting it. And then advanced copies go out and people suddenly have it. And they're saying, oh my gosh, this book was amazing. It was life changing. It was the best thing ever. You need to go and buy it. It comes out next month. Then finally it comes out and everyone's, oh my God, the book is out. This is so great. And you need to go and buy it. It was so good. It changed my life. 
And then next week, they're doing the exact same thing for another book. And the book that they were just talking about as being the greatest thing since sliced bread is now suddenly something that they don't talk about anymore. And like, I get it, book people, you know, we're a dramatic bunch. Oh, actually that wind is nice. It's getting pretty warm in here. Now remember, as much as we can say, oh, it's all for the love of stories, Publishing is an industry and industries want to make money. So hyping a book, whether that be an ad on a website or sending a PR box to an influencer to talk about, like that is marketing that is meant to sell copies of the book. And of course, while everyone wants their book to sell indefinitely, Publishers don't really care if it sells well for a month or if it sells well for 30 years. I mean, optimally they want the 30 year one because that's more money long term, but if it makes them a ton of money right up front, like they've done their job. And I'll say personally, nothing sells me on a book more than someone with enthusiasm. And I did do a video on book consumerism last year, so I might repeat myself a little here. But when you think of being a book blogger, a lot of people go to thinking about people who have a lot of books. And if you want to have a lot of books, that means you need to buy a lot of books and it can get expensive, especially if you're shelling out for hardcovers or you're buying multiple copies of the same book because they have a special edition or they're sprayed edges or they're fancy bookmarks, end page art, subscription boxes. Like I, that's a second mortgage right there. A lot of book people have a collector's mentality. We like to have a physical copy that is an embodiment of a story. How freaking cool is that? Plus, we're all fiends for the aesthetic. I also think it comes down to if you want to show your love for something, you feel like you need to purchase things that show your love for something when that doesn't have to be the case. You can borrow a library book. You can get a book from a friend. You know, you can, even if you want to buy a very cheap ebook, you don't have to have physical things near you to be a reader. That's not how that works. But of course, when there's something pretty and shiny, you know, you want to own it. You want to have what someone else has. And in a way you want to support the author. You don't want to feel like you're missing out on something. So I would remind you that when you see a book getting hyped to high hell, to actually look at it and think, would you actually like to own that? Like regardless of how many people are saying it's amazing and life-changing, would you personally actually like to read that? You're gonna put your critical thinking skills hat on and you're gonna save yourself some money. And this also makes me look at my own biases because I get sent things. Like this is technically part of my job is to hype books. And how do I and other book bloggers market to you? we usually rely on enthusiasm and hyperbole. In case you haven't noticed, I get very excited about books very easily. <laughs> and when I enjoy something, I obviously want to share it with other people. So I'm going to use phrases like, this book cured my depression, when chemically we know that is not possible, or how I like to make things my personality for two to four weeks at a time. Currently, Yellowface is living rent-free in my brain, and I have made so many posts about it already. So even though that I know I use those tactics, do I still get sucked in when I see another book blogger friend of mine saying that this is the best book they've ever read and I need to go out and buy it right now? Absolutely I do. But actually using Fourth Wing as a good example, I was worried because when this first came out and I was seeing it everywhere, I was worried that this was going to get overhyped for me. Overhyping I think can damage a book's reputation just as much as underhyping it can. When you're seeing a book being reviewed by a variety of people and they're going, yeah, this book was great, it was really cool, oh, this was so fun, you're like, all right, sick. But when you see like 70 people in a row going, this is the best book I've ever read. I'm like, okay, my expectations have gone from here to here. But that's just the thing, right? Cause not a lot of books can live up to this type of a reputation. And that's where disappointment and people bashing it comes into play. Usually when something first blows up or goes viral online, it happens within the community that it is meant for. So if it's a fantasy book, suddenly everybody who reads fantasy is all talking about this new release and they're hyping it up and everyone's buying it and getting excited. But then it gets too much attention. And now it has the attention of people outside of that community, which you would think is good because then you know, more people wanna try it out. Maybe you're going to bring more people into that community. This is the spot where a lot of people start saying, oh, this book is so overhyped. Now you can absolutely not like a book in a genre that you like. You know, maybe it's a newer author and their pacing's a little weird, or maybe there actually was something harmful in that book. But my friend Bailey, Greek choir on TikTok, uh, recently put up this video that also helped inspire kind of this part of the video where she was talking about book 
TikTok etiquette and how there's a lot of people that when they find these overhyped books will read them and then say, oh, book talk lied to me because book talkers are notorious for our enthusiasm and hyperbole when trying to get other people to enjoy books that we like. But it's like, no, book talk itself didn't lie to you. You lied to yourself thinking that you didn't want to miss out on this romance book because everyone was hyping it and everyone was talking about it. But you don't read romance. So obviously you're not going to like a book about romance. You don't get to be a bitch on the internet if you read a book that you know you're not going to like and then shit on it for being a book that you don't like. That's why I've seen a lot of clashing opinions on Fourth Wing because some people who read romance fantasy are reading it and saying it was really good and the people who don't read romance fantasy are saying, oh, this sucked because there's romance fantasy tropes in it. It's like, hello? Or people who are picking up yellow face going, well, I couldn't connect with the main character. I'm like, yeah, bitch, I fucking hope you don't. The whole point of this book is that the main character is awful and you're not supposed to like her. Like, I did not lie to you when I said that I loved this book and I think this is a huge keystone in publishing and is going to be like a modern classic. But if you don't like literary fiction, then you're probably not gonna like it. But now I wanna talk about how each of these three books got their hype online and by whom and how and for how long and some predictions of my own over how I think these books are going to do in the market in a long-term setting. Oh, I thought I was strong enough to do this without caffeine, but I'm not. So you get a little ASMR moment. Uh, sweet, sweet caffeine. Where was I? All right, let's slander fourth wing. No, <laughs> I'm kidding. I liked this book actually quite a bit. And I'll give you my full thoughts and review during next week's wrap up. So not only is fourth wing just a delight to look at, but I feel like the marketing for this book went fucking hard. This is published by Red Tower, which is a new imprint of Entangled that is going to be focusing on these romanticy type new adult books. Only a couple people that I saw that got advanced copies of it. It was kind of, you know, it was pretty low. It didn't seem like they had a super big budget, which I was like, that's, you know, regular. It's a new imprint. Obviously, you know, like they have Entangled money, but like, they, they can't start off, you know, 100, 100%, I get it. Then we get sprayed edges and book talk loses its collective shit. Suddenly every third video on my FYP page is talking about fourth wing. Oh my God, it's dragons. Oh my God, it's a war college. Oh my God, it's spicy. Oh my God, it's enemies to lovers. Apparently they sent out more advanced copies than I thought because now reviews start flooding in and I'm seeing people saying that this is the best book they've ever read. This is their new personality. Oh my God, this will cure your diseases and do your dishes and like lull you to sleep at night. It's gonna do whatever you need it to do. Within the first week, it is sold out everywhere. It is sold out online. I cannot find this in any store. And because my company distributes this book, I am hearing outrageous numbers about this going out. Right out of the gate, it hit our bestseller list and it's hit tons of bestseller lists across the country. And originally I thought, okay, well, we're in stage one of the trend cycle, but that's not actually the case because there has been so much groundwork that has already been laid for this book to be as successful as it is. Especially during COVID times, like new adult has become a recognized age ban. People want new adult. This is already a thing. Romance fantasy has been seeing an uptick. It's been trending. Thirdly, dragon books are coming into style. I personally blame Samantha Shannon for that and I'm not mad at it. And on top of it being in the right place at the right time with all the right keywords, and hitting just the right market, it's so pretty, right? Who doesn't want this? And because new adult and romance in general is you know, devalued because it's a genre that mostly women read and write and that's a whole other topic and discussion. Not that there's a low bar, but there's definitely room for improvement and there's also room for more realistic depictions of relationships and being able to see a more realistic person in a fantasy world like, I haven't seen that before. Because this was getting so much hype and people were talking about it, people outside of the romance and fantasy genre lovers picked it up and that's when reviews started going downhill. The writing is bad. The love interest is cringe. The main character is weak. And it's like, you are really missing the point. You believe, subconsciously or not, that strong female characters can only be strong if they are constantly swinging a sword around that's not what you get in this book. And so I can see why you'd be like, oh, the main character doesn't do anything. She does plenty. She just doesn't do what you expect her to do. So is this book overhyped? 
I mean, like, yeah, maybe a little. Like, I keep seeing it everywhere, and did I personally think this is the best book that I've ever read? No, but I still enjoyed it, and I'm glad that I read it. But really, if we look at trend cycles and where the market's going and what people and bloggers are wanting and looking for, this doesn't surprise me that this became as popular as it did. And though places like, you know, New York Times, Publishers Marketplace, big, big names that go over the bestsellers or that give stars to certain books, this is not typically the type of book that would get that type of attention. Those are more like literary things. So this might have gotten a spot on the New York Times list for a little while because of pure numbers, but I don't know how many journalists would like go out of their way to review this. But if I saw somebody on TikTok say this is the greatest book I've ever read, and then I saw 17 other people in a row talking about it, like, yeah, I'm gonna pick this up. All right, everyone take a drink of something. I need to recalibrate. I still have quite a bit of my script left. Now, I want to compare the online hype of Fourth Wing to how people talk about Yellowface. Like I mentioned earlier, Yellowface by R.F. Kuang is her literary debut that is about a, a white woman who steals an Asian woman's work and tries to pass it off as her own, and then the lengths that she will go to to keep it under her own name. There's a lot to unpack on race and tokenism and who can write what, and then also the microaggressions and systemic issues that are in the publishing industry. Now, R.F. Kuang is an established author. She wrote the Poppy War trilogy, she wrote Babel, which also everyone lost their shit about last year. When her new book was announced, people were obviously excited. Oh, it's an author coming out with something different. Oh my god, what a shocking and taboo subject. It wasn't as in your face as Fourth Wing was. Like this was, I'd say, consistent. Like people started getting review copies, uh, some big name publishing journalists and papers and lists started coming out with articles on it. This was more of a consistent slow burn of a marketing campaign, which may be because like she's already established so her name can sell you the book and it doesn't have to be gimmicks of a shiny cover. And here's not to say that shiny covers are bad or that gimmicks are bad, right? Cause like, mm, I love my fourth wing copy and you can pry that from my cold dead hands. But I think the thing that really drew attention to this was that the HCP union stroke, striked, stroke, struck? The HBC union went on strike in between the release of Babel and the release of Yellowface. In case you didn't know, last year the HarperCollins union went on strike to strike for higher wages and better working conditions, and RF Kuang is a HarperCollins author, and so she spoke at some of these strikes. She very vocally was for the union, and between the academic unionization, people in power themes in Babel, and now this kind of expose of the publishing industry that was Yellowface has created a perfect storm of interest for her next book. But even to this day, the majority of people that I see talking about this book are older book talkers or book fluencers. I see more people of color talking about it. I see more people who are in the publishing industry talking about it. And while it's still enthusiastic, it's a little bit more serious. There's a bit more gravity to any review or commentary that I hear on this. It's not the same like screen crying, throwing up, yelling video. Social media wise, it is less visible than maybe Fourth Wing is, but in general it is like well bought and well talked about and well thought about. And the third type of hype cycle I want to talk about is for This Is How You Lose The Time War. This came out in 2019 and I wouldn't say there was a hype about it, but there was definitely excitement about it, kind of seen it floating around in my circles. So even though it had a loyal fan base, it took one tweet to blow this book up. And that tweet was by an account under the name of Biggles Dickless Wolfwood that reads, do not look up anything about this book. Just read it. It's only like 200 pages. You can download it on Audible. It's like only four hours. Do it right now. I'm extremely serious. <sighs> God, I love the internet. Okay. This tweet blew up. Up. It had over 10 million impressions. And after Biggles Dickles tweeted about this, I'm not gonna laugh, I'm an adult. I'm gonna call him BDF, that's the only way I'm gonna be able to get to this video. So the week after BDF tweeted about this, it rose to number three on Amazon's best selling books. And not like number three in sci fi or like number three in like queer fiction. No, no, no. Number three overall. It is beating out a Pulitzer Prize winner and like Dr. Seuss and then also like some kind of Taylor Swift adjacent kids book or something. And that in itself is ridiculous. <laughs> It is biggest ridiculous, you would say. This is unusual for a book because for the most part, a book will see the majority of its sales right as it comes out. So having a second win four years later 
at the degree that it did because of one tweet by like a random anime fan stan account that is unheard of. Actually, I could say the same thing about Song of Achilles. And um, well, this was Twitter, but this was TikTok. Queer retelling of the Iliad came out in 2012, and it originally had a print run of 20,000, which is pretty low. As far as I know, this sold like okay, but then Book Talk got a hold of it in 2020 or 2021, and now it has sold two million copies. And that is the power of the internet, ladies and gentlemen. Now, what do I, Rachel, a model who's read, predict about the life cycles of these three books? Well, I'm so glad you asked, let me tell you. Because of that tweet, I'm assuming there's going to be a big spike in sales for this book and then kind of, you know, the eventual drop off. But now because that went so viral, people are gonna be more aware of this book. So I'm assuming that it's gonna lead to more consistent sales over time. And this will kind of cycle in and out of popularity without ever fully dropping off. It's also interesting when this happened because Amal recently announced that she had signed on for I think a four book deal with Tor. That stuff doesn't happen overnight. That was likely in the works for a little while, but seeing as how kind of this blew up and then that got announced, it's interesting, you know, the timelines. If we're talking about Fourth Wing, I do predict that this is going to do well for a very long time, but I also don't think this is going to be the book that people return to in 10 years. The marketing and the hype for this book focuses on the romance, the excitement, the adrenaline, the action, but a lot of other romance books do that. So I, not to say that this isn't anything special because it is, this is a very different, very cool book. I do actually think this has potential to have longevity and also be a keystone or a trailblazer in the romantic fantasy genre. Though fantasy books do tend to stick around a little longer, the romance genre moves and turns over so fast that that's what makes me question the longevity of this particular book. Like if this replaces Akotar as the number one new adult fantasy romance series, wouldn't be mad. But then I think the way that people are going to interact with and consume Yellowface is going to look very different. And also not to say that things like fantasy or romance are not important or don't hold value. The way that fantasy discusses, say, racism or class inequality is different than a contemporary novel. Yellowface discusses cancellation, the toxicity of social media, racism and microaggressions in the publishing industry. So in a way, this is the start of a genre. This is going to be the key stone book. A lot of articles and like social media platforms and video essays and even like talk shows and stuff, they do talk about the toxicity of social media and racism in different industries. Like they're doing that, but I haven't seen that in a fictionalized narrative. And physical books have a different impact on social narrative than articles do or transcripts do. And I'm not saying that like it's better or it's worse but like they do, they just have a different type of impact. And being the first of its kind means that this book stands alone uh, from her other works and also from what everybody else in the literary fiction, modern fiction genre is doing. The emphasis of reviews is not, oh, it's sexy and exciting. The emphasis of reviews of this book is this is important. So all three of these books made impacts. They made cultural impacts, they made money. People are talking about them. They got hyped, but they all did it in a different way. And I think they're going to stick around in a different way too. And who's to say, maybe I'm completely wrong. I literally work in marketing for my day job and I'm a book blog the rest of the time. Like I know how cycles work and I know how easy it is to get hype and get marketing for something. And you know what? Maybe these will come back in style. Maybe they'll never leave. I don't know. That's just the magic of the internet, baby. And that's that on that. I would love to hear everyone's thoughts on this topic. Please leave down below whatever you got. I mean, I think I went through quite a bit in this video, so I hope this video isn't too long. Sorry about that editing, Rachel. But being in the book community as both a bookseller, a book blogger, and now as a book distributor for so long, like I'm coming up on a decade. Mm, oh my God, what is time? I've had time to see and experience and live through those cycles developing and like figuring out what is right for me and what I want to consume and like how I want to consume it. And then also watching other people do that and watching particular books or authors go through those cycles or go through those spikes. It's too early and I'm not drunk or caffeinated enough to get philosophical. I'm gonna have to wrap this up, but hey, you know, at least it's books.
It could be drugs. You know where to click to like the video. You know where to click to subscribe. I hope you guys are all having a nice day wherever you are, and I will see you all next week. Bye!